This is a 2018 Tesla Model 3. My 2018 Tesla Model 3. Now, typically, I'd show you some of the quirks and features of this car, and then I'd get it out on the road and try it. But today, we're not doing any of that. We're just doing some upgrades. So, why all the upgrades? Well, <laughs> for one, my car's going out of warranty, so I'm a little less worried about breaking stuff. But the second thing, and probably the more important thing, is, well, I might have had a slight moment of weakness and I wasn't paying attention and I backed the car into my sister's Jeep. <laughs> Big whoop. Don't worry, the Jeep's fine. My car, eh, not quite the same. The lift gate's bad, the tail lights are broken, and, well, the bumper's pretty messed up. I went to a Tesla-approved body shop last year and got a quote to fix it for $10,000. Are you kidding me? No. I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to put that on insurance. I said, I'm going to DIY the repair. The problem is, is at the time, Tesla wouldn't sell me parts. They'd only sell it to approved body repair shops. With help from the electrified garage, I was able to get this lift gate from a company in California for about $1,000. And then I put a bunch of eBay searches up for bumpers. Buying bumpers in good condition from salvage cars is not very easy, turns out. And uh, well, a year later, I came up dry. I decided I finally wanted to fix it, and Tesla had a change of heart. They'll now let you rent their service manuals for $100 a day, yikes, and they will sell you parts. And I know that because I bought the new 2021 center console. More on that in a minute. But I looked at a new bumper, and it was about $1,000. Okay, let's do this thing. Well, the bumper comes unpainted. And I already talked to a paint shop here in Salt Lake, and in order to fix the bumper I already had, they'd have to strip it down all the way, reprep it, and then paint the entire thing, because this is a multi-coat paint that is very difficult to match. And Tesla also doesn't provide color chips to paint manufacturers, so it wouldn't probably be perfect. Ah, oh, boy. So what do we do? Well, I was on Alibaba one day and saw these. So both bumpers and side skirts and a spoiler for $950? <laughs> that sounds like a bargain. That's less than Tesla charges for one bumper and you still have to paint it. These come pre-painted in the factory paint, which in theory sounds excellent, but it also sounds a little too good to be true. Four times the parts painted for less money well, you do have to pay for shipping overseas, but I think I might take the risk because not only do they have the potential to look pretty cool, I think they look great on their website, and while well, maybe you might not prefer them, they do look distinctly different than every other white Tesla on the road, of which there are a bajillion now. Thanks a lot, Elon, for making my premium color free. But also, content. So I guess we order them and wait for a couple months for them to arrive, except for... <laughs> They're already here. I might be the first person I know to have these, but uh, they are real and they look pretty good. So I've got the service manual here. I rented it for 30 minutes and then I printed off the pages that I actually needed as PDFs because I wasn't about to pay $100 for today. <laughs> You gotta think smarter, not harder. But the thing is, I don't actually think this car is going to be very hard to take apart because it's basically made of Legos because, well, they built this car in a tent. And that's not a joke. They literally built this car inside of a tent. So we're just gonna start pulling stuff apart and uh, hopefully we can get to the bumper. Okay, check it out. There's the motor. It's like the size of a cantaloupe. Pretty small. Pretty cool. Do you know what else is cool? A Tesla powertrain inside of a vintage Porsche. Today's sponsor, Omaze, gives away one of a kind prizes while donating money to charities across the world. They allow nonprofits to spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on their missions. Omaze is supporting the Peterson Automotive Museum, that amazing LA-based center that explores and presents the history of the automobile. 
Your generosity can help the museum extend its programs both on-site and online, and in exchange, you can get the chance to win a vintage 1968 Porsche 912 that has been converted by Z Electric and the Peterson Museum with a Tesla powertrain. It has been modernized while maintaining its gorgeous original design. It has 300 horsepower and can do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. I cannot begin to communicate how badly I want this car, and I'm sure you do too. Enter for your chance to win this 1968 Porsche 912 EV and support the Peterson Automotive Museum at the same time by going to omaze.com slash snazzy labs today. Ew, <laughs> gross. How about I put the iPad right there? <laughs> Good spot. Okay. Wow, those were loose. Okay. So that's done. Next step. Oh, this is the part where I think it's going to be a little sucky. We're going to have to lift this up because I got to get access. I gotta get access to the wheel. Okay, if you've never done it before, jacking a Tesla is quite a bit of fun. That was sarcasm. Because unlike most cars where you have a rail that runs the length of the chassis, uh, Teslas have four points and four points only where you can lift or jack up the car. In fact, they're little tiny holes and you have to distribute the pressure through these little jack pads. Now they fit in uh, pretty easily, but the problem is, because they are so small, you can't actually jack up the car because you need to lift it and then place a jack stand below. But, but you can't place a jack stand because there's only a single point from which you can lift the vehicle. So there's these fancy pants companies out there now that make jack stands specifically for Teslas where you can lift and then place the jack all in one go. But uh, we're just going to live dangerously and operate with the car just on this low profile little lift. Well, kind of feels like deja vu. I'm on this side doing the exact same thing. And I decided to wait until it was 103 degrees to do this. I've had these parts for a number of months, but just wanted to wait until it was good and hot in this air on air conditioned shop. All right, so we got to detach what I presume to be the radar or maybe the ultrasonic sensors. I don't know. Um, disconnect the electrical connector from the front fascia in the right hand wheel well. Tip, slide the locking tab away from the connector and then press down on the tab to release the connector. Yeah, I don't have a locking tab, I don't think. I've slid, slid it, slid it in every which way, and nothing is moving. And you also said I'd have five screw holes, and I only have three, so I don't really trust anything this manual says right now. What the heck? I think I got the tab. <laughs> nice. That is quite a waterproof connector. I learned a new thing. On iPads with the home button, you can still swipe up to open. <laughs> Let's get back to the bumper, huh? That was easy. Let's get this side. Here we go. Okay. What are you still attached to, my friend? You know, it says to remove these five, and I said I only have three. Well, I do, except for actually, I have five. <laughs> the difference is that the new ones are down here, nice and accessible. Mine are up here behind the wheel. Uh, I hope I can get to these without having to pull the wheels off because that would not be fun. Oh no! I scratched my new Apple Watch. It's a day old. That's so whatever. That's stupid anyway. You might be wondering, I have an Apple Watch because in the past I kind of haven't used them. Well, as you might be able to tell from this angle, I could use a little bit of working out. 
and it's on the list of to-dos. I went and got one because I thought, ah, oh, you know, I'm fitness goal oriented, so if I got some rings or something, it'll work. And you might be wondering, why red on red? That seems like a really bad combination. Uh, you'd be right. <laughs> Cheapest color, Best Buy. Well, I did it. I removed the 10 snaps the Tesla said you didn't have to remove. Uh, frankly, I've never been more comfortable, but I think I'm about ready to pull the bumper off now. Come on. <laughs> well, okay, look, everything's attached through that one assembly. Oh, that looks nice. Look at the front of the car now. <sighs> Basically, what's happening now is I'm pulling out this harness from the front bumper, which has my ultrasonic sensors. It has my ambient temperature sensor, and it also has the fog lights. Now, up until literally like two minutes ago, I didn't realize this bumper doesn't accommodate the fog lights. Mm. Well, the Tesla Model 3 fog lights are actually pretty awful, and so I don't really care. They're mostly aesthetic. I think this bumper looks cool, and so I don't really care that I'm, I'm missing my fog lights in so much as it doesn't throw up error codes on my ECU. I turned the car on, drove around, not only without the fog lights, but without the wiring harness for the ultrasonic sensors, and it was fine. So uh, I'm not worried about it. Here's a fun fact for you. So in the service manual, uh, Tesla bills based on flat rate time. So there's a task, it's estimated to take this much time to perform it, and that's what they charge you when you go to get stuff done. Their minimum billing unit is 0.1 hours though, which is six minutes. And so the smallest amount of time they can bill you for anything is six minutes. But it also means that really easy tasks like this, for which there is a two-page instruction manual, and uh, well, it's literally doing this. That's supposed to take six minutes. <laughs> That's definitely a screw. Good thing I didn't try to pry that off like the manual says. So there's three screws that hold this side on. Look how easy it comes off. And then there's a snap that really not want to come off. But eventually it does. This is my broken one. Whoops. Kobe. Perfecto. So, Benjamin. Ow. My new cinematographer said, wouldn't it just be easier to take the back wheel off? I said, no. At this point, I still refuse to admit he might have been correct. It's kind of like butter. <laughs> Release the clips and push the nut. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hello, nut. There are supposed to be three bolts right here, right here, right here. There are zero bolts right here, right here, and right here. And they're not snaps, they're bolts. So those didn't just fall out. Those didn't get put in on the assembly line. Cool. Freaking Tesla, dude. <laughs> they change their cars like every week and then they don't tell you what they changed. There's four bolts on my car that are not in the manual. So maybe instead of putting the three diffuser bolts where they were supposed to be, they just used these instead at the time. Oh, it's another one of these joyous connectors, my favorite. Oh, <laughs> there's a third bolt. That's not in the manual. If you're ever taking something apart and it's not coming apart, don't worry, it's not you. 
It's Tesla. Oh, look at that! One, two, three. There are three. Okay, so relocating the harness on this one was way easier because there were already snap points, which made it a pinch. I do think that fitting this diffuser on is going to be a little bit more difficult though. So we're just gonna take this and roughly slide it on. And then before I forget, we do need to connect the parking sensor back up to its original location. I'm gonna take this, flip it around, connect it really, really well. What fun are new cool bumpers if you don't have new cool tail lights? Here they are. Now, here's the reality. My tail lights need to be replaced, right? And I've never been a fan of the stock Tesla ones. So I bought these aftermarket ones on AliExpress. Wait a minute. So, um, don't buy stuff for cars off of Alibaba. That is, if you live in a North American market because Asia and the EU and pretty much the rest of the world have decided on what I would argue are more logical standards. The US doesn't do that. These tail lights have four pins that come in from the wiring harness. One is ground, two is this consistent power like the brake light always on function. Third is active braking. And then the fourth pin is for your turn signal. The problem is in the US, we often by law, well, law doesn't require amber turn signals. And so most cars will just flash the brake light. This is an objectively poor way of doing things, but that's the way that it's done in the United States. The problem is, is that these headlights don't anticipate that type of wiring standard. They're intended for Europe and Asia. Now, my car actually does have all four pins. However, the computer is not properly sending data because it's sending uh, basically a consistent turn signal to the brake light. Because again, this uses the brake light as the turn signal and this light is expecting the turn signal to only be used as the turn signal. Confusing, but let me explain. When I put the car in drive, and whenever my foot is on the brake, you will see that the lights are all amber. Now, if I do turn the turn signal on, that looks good because again, it's just pulsing that same turn signal light. But when I cancel my turn, well, the turn signal pin once again turns fully solid because that is a brake light in the North American market. Even if I wanted to fix it, and I could, I could splice wiring from these turn signal repeaters all the way up here and run that signal all the way through the interior of my car, I have to pull up carpet, remove seats. I'm not nuts. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not nuts. I could splice the third pin on this brake light, utilize the fourth pin, which is sent from the car's ECU. It's just not utilized by the North American tail light. I'd get a brake light and then I could splice in a turn signal repeater light into this tail light. I'm not going to do that, but even if I wanted to, it still wouldn't be ideal because in the United States, we have to have reverse lights on both sides, those white lights. And well, in the EU, they don't. They just have to have them on one side. And so these tail lights from the factory, they only have the reverse lights on the right side. Good thing I bought other tail lights about a year ago before I got excited and bought these because I'm just putting the regular Tesla tail lights right back. All in all, I think the front bumper and the rear bumper look pretty good. The front bumper actually, well, it matches a lot better than the rear bumper does. The rear bumper is a little bit off on the paint, which is kind of a bummer uh, because, well, I did this to not have to paint a bumper and it's off enough that I'll probably have to go get it blended or at the very least, you know, maybe try considering a wrap. Although I've been avoiding that for years. It's so much money to do that. Now all I have to do is replace the rest of the tail lights. I guess I don't technically need to remove this. Although I would like it just in case I decide to revert because I don't need this. No one's made it this far. Comment hot beans down below if you've watched this long into the video.
that the bumpers are installed, and while I'm a little sad the tail lights didn't work out, I think the bumpers actually look really cool. They've grown on me a ton over the last several days. They look amazing in person. That front end is mean. And while the back end is disappointingly a fairly different color than the rest of the car, I mean, what can you really expect for $1,000 on Alibaba? I guess I could go out and get a wrap. I guess I could go out and, uh, I don't know, repaint it, or maybe just trade in my car for an entirely new one. Nah, just kidding. I do want to tell you about the center console though, but not in this video. That will be in a future video because holy smokes, that ended up being an absolute nightmare. I had to basically pull apart my entire car because I had a wiring harness that Tesla said I didn't. It's a whole thing. Oh, and that dash display. It's, it's awesome. I can't wait to tell you about that. So get subscribed so you won't miss that video. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, send it to someone you hate. But most importantly, and as always, stay snappy. See you later, folks.